When you lose your neck curve, a.k.a. reversed cervical curve, kyphotic neck, what does that do to the tension in the, the system? Well, it increases the linear tension in the system. It'll increase that in the brainstem, the cerebellum, cranial nerves 5 through 12, all the way down to the cauda equina. Okay? Just by losing your neck curve, it will affect tension all the way down to your sacral plexus. We know that. We've known that since the 1960s. My group, we've done several randomized trials. One of them, we changed the neck curve and we showed it improved low back and leg pain and reflexes in the lower extremity. Just by changing the neck curve, that was a randomized trial that we did on 80 subjects. Pretty cool paper. We know this. Your change in the spinal cord, the whole system, is anywhere from seven and a half centimeters up to 10 centimeters, as was found by another author named Lewis in 1981. We can change the, the length of your spinal cord by 10 centimeters when you lose your sagittal plane curves. That's a lot of stretch. What does that do? Well, internally, what that will do is it will change the fluid pressure inside this contained system. We have CSF fluid, we have vascular fluid, and then we just have cytoplasm fluid. When you put tension on this system, it raises the intramedullary pressure, which alters the pressure of perfusion, which is the exchange of oxygen and nutrients to and from the cord. It will impair oxidative phosphorylation out of the mitochondria of the neuron. In other words, it changes ATP levels from ADP. Do you guys follow that? This has been measured and tested. When you lose your, your cervical curve, that's the big one, so it, it's more profound in the neck, this is what your spinal cord will look like on the right. That is having a deep cervical curve on the left. You can see the difference in the tension in the nerve roots and the tension in the spinal cord, yes? This comes from Alf Bregg's work in 1978. Here's what you may not know. When you do that, you alter the way the nerve transmission occurs. Nerves need to do this. When they propagate an action potential, the neuron at the microscopic level will shorten on its long axis and swell three-dimensionally. Your neuron itself undergoes what's called a phase colloid transition. As certain things are kicked off, the nerve will swell. As they reattach, it will compact and it has a lot to do with calcium, okay? This has been measured. Now, guess what a neuron can't do so easily when it's under tension? Guess what it can't do? It can't shorten on its long axis and it can't swell. So the theory is if you lose your neck curve, it is going to alter the mechanical properties of this mechanical phenomenon in carrying an action potential. Do you guys follow that? Up until just recently, it, it was never really proven that when you put a nerve under tension, that, that that impairs that. We now know that that's what's going on. It doesn't stop the transmission, it slows it down. So the speed of firing will, short, will uh, increase. Its speed will take a longer time when it's under tension compared to when it's not. Do you guys follow? It's a mechanical phenomenon just as much as it, as it is a biochemical one. So I'm going to start with a case study so I don't lose you in data. Because I like, I like data. Because to me, that's all I need to know. Right there, that's all I need to know. Biomechanics of the central nervous system, that's why I want to restore the neck curve. For me, that's enough. For other people, you like to see, and you like to see the results, and you go, okay. So case number one by my good friend Jeff Kaiser. Sometimes I teach other people's cases because I don't want you to think it's only me that can do it. I've trained doctors around the world. I can train everybody in the room to correct the spine. I promise you. It's reproducible. Person with headaches, 28-year-old male, been to a lot of different providers, only temporary relief. Why? What does he have? That's not him, by the way. It's a model. It's got anterior head translation and rounding of the shoulders. Can you see the x-ray or do you need to take one? What do you think? 
it's a pretty good idea to take the x-ray because you don't know what it looks like. So we take the x-ray. He's got a reversal of his mid and lower cervical curve, yes? Okay, so I put the two together. I go forward head posture, bad problem. Kyphotic neck curve, bad problem. His, in his case, it's causing asthma and headaches. We take an AP cervical. It's not just the sagittal plane. We take an image from the front. He's got a big right head translation. Both of these are looking at you. So in CBP, we look at the 3D posture. We go, you have right head translation. We measure it with posture screen. We put numbers on it, and then we take an x-ray and we measure it as well. 17 millimeters of right head translation. What does that mean to you? How large is that? Well, what if I told you the range of motion, the maximum range of motion was 35 millimeters? So now we've got a displacement of 50% of the range of motion. Is that significant? Yeah. That's like walking around with your head turned 40 degrees, and you think that's normal, right? So I'm walking straight ahead, but I'm looking to my left. That's the way this is. When you see postural displacements, you've got to look at them in terms of percentage of their range of motion. That'll give you an idea of how bad they are. Treatment plan, three times a week for 10 weeks, 30 visits. Here's what we're going to do. Typical chiropractic, diversified. Why? Because we adjust segments of the spine. It's important. It improves mobility. It helps with pain. It helps with neurology. Mirror image adjustments. So your head's translated to the right. So we lie you down on the left and we translate your head to the left and apply a force, chiropractic adjustment. That's part one. Part two, we know that's not enough. We've got to exercise. Look how fun it is. We are going to exercise the neck curve. If you have a kyphotic lower neck, guess what we're going to do? We're going to exercise you in the lower neck. Apply a load to force the curve in there while you bend your head and translate your head backwards. We call it a mirror image neck exercise. It's called the prolordotic. And then everybody's favorite, we are going to do traction. So this is what we did with the person. We did mirror image traction with them in the office and at home. All headaches were gone. Neck curve changed. Asthma improved. Patient placed on maintenance. We'll talk about that. Here's the results. How's that? 10 weeks later. Is that pretty good? Pretty rapid change. Actually faster than normal.